Hey everybody, welcome to Driving Line and Nitto Tires, chatting live with Casey Curry. Today we got two special guests, I'm actually super excited. Uh, we got Dave Cole and Ryan Thomas from Ultra 4, uh, two buds, uh, guys that we race down with Baja with. Uh, man, just, I mean, obviously Ultra 4 being on fire, my uh, favorite event of the year, King of the Hammers. Uh, and everything they do with Ultra 4, I went to Crandon last year myself, but uh, let's get these guys on. Dave and Ryan, thank you guys so much for joining today on Driving Line Show. Still hey, hey, here, buddy. How's it going, Casey? It's uh, it's going good. So, uh, Dave, thank you for the opportunity of getting on here. I know right now you guys are not in California. You're not in 80-degree uh, weather. Where, uh, where are we at right now? We're in a sauna. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's uh, we're in uh, South Pittsburgh, Tennessee, about an hour for 45 minutes from Chattanooga and an hour or so from Nashville. And we're going to go racing here this weekend. First race back after the Ronas. Dude, I'm, I'm stoked that Ultra 4 is back racing and it's cool to see you guys in Tennessee. I was watching some YouTube the other night. Dude, that event, that is like a, it can be super fast or when it gets wet, super gnarly. Like I just I just drove the first rock section in the in the UTV. And I had to winch probably half of it. <laughs> so it was, it's legit and it's dry. It's not even wet oh. yet. It's just, dry. It's, it's good rocks. When you say best, that. Best rocks on the East Coast. When you say that though, technically the hammers, you can get a UTV through the hammers without winching, which means they're gnarly rocks. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I like that. Yeah, Harder to drive up these trails than most of the hammers trails. Yeah. That's a, uh, that's badass. I totally like that. So, all right. So getting the ultra four, King of the Hammers went off with, I mean, dude, totally on fire, epic event. Uh, we'll, we'll get into the Hammers later. But obviously right now, the virus has kind of affected racing. I mean, for the rest of the year, where like people watching, where can these fans and, and dedicated enthusiasts see Ultra 4 for the rest of 2020? So we're here in, in Tennessee for, for this weekend coming up. We moved our national event, which has historically been mid-October in Reno, we moved that race to be a, a Western regional race, and that's in September, I believe, September 18th. And then we moved nationals to the center of the country, back to Oklahoma, just so it'd be easier for families, uh, teams, fans to come see it. It's it's not great for the California guys, but it's better in general for the rest of the series. So but we'll be about an hour north, an hour and a half north of Dallas at Crossbar Ranch in mid-October. So there's just only, there's three races left. We have a uh, we've been invited to go to Crandon again for Fall Crandon. We hope to see you there too. You defend your defend your title, <laughs> but uh, but uh, we're gonna do Fall Crandon again with Ultra Four guys as well. Oh, rad! That is awesome to see. That is awesome. Now, as far as uh, now, are you guys doing live stream or how can people see the yeah. results and how where can where can everyone watch Ultra Four when when we're on uh, on the uh, Instagram or iPhone? Website links to the live feed, and we are committed to live feed for all the events this year. I'm doubling down on that because we know there are people that aren't going to make it to spectate in person, so we want to make sure that we can bring the action to them like we do with King of the Hammers. Killer, dude. Absolutely love that. So We'll have, uh, we'll have uh, our, our full, full, full live feed at every race the rest Rad. of the year. Rad. Love it. I believe driving line, driving line is also carrying, the, carrying the, uh, the embed code, I believe. Oh, sweet. So everybody can see it then. Awesome. So, uh, all right. So let's talk about King of the Hammers, dude. I know, you gotta, uh, you gotta drive by, you got to drive by hello right out of the bay, right out of the gate though, Casey. Yeah. Yeah. One, one guy's coming by to drive by and say hello. Yeah. To so, What's up boss. Not much. How you doing? I'm doing all right. Doing all right. Probably a little cooler <laughs> than you guys right now, but all good. Well, he's going racing this weekend. So he's cooler. Yeah, that is true. That is true. <laughs> that is true. I I'm, I'm, I am ready to get back. What's he? What's he driving? Every class, one class, just uh, forty four hundred this weekend. The and, IFS uh, car. Yep. 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 That that new car is pretty sweet. Not gonna lie. It's it's a good car. She's done us well so far. Yeah. One good. race it, it, it did its job. Heck yeah, dude. Good luck, man. Thank you. See you soon. You got it. All right. All right, sorry for the impromptu guess. No, you're all good. You're all good. So so I want to talk about the hammers, dude. Obviously for me, it's my I, dude, in the away from everything, like all we could think about was hanging out at the Hammers. I mean, 2021 is around the corner. Are we are we going to go bigger than ever? Is is how's everything going with the Hammers? We're we're 100 on with the Hammers, and we're really really close to announcing 
the biggest schedule we've ever had for Ultra Four the series as well. So K Hammers is on, man. We're gonna do it. We're, we'll we'll be able to. We'll, we might have to, you know, have some adjustments to to uh, you know to how we do business. Yep. But we'll be there. Our fans will be there. Our racers will be there. We'll have a great course. We'll have a great time. I love that event. That is by far. You guys have absolutely done a great job. I, I we do we do love that event, Ryan. So, dude, I'll, let's see. Uh, everybody needs to know who Ryan Thomas is. Like, little background. What are you doing? Why are you hanging out, Dave? Like, what what's the goal? I'll tell you what. I was just telling Dave when I sat down here that driving up in the hills here and seeing what this race course looks like, I equate. Right now, uh, somebody that says they're an off-road racer, it's like saying you're a surfer, but you only ride a longboard or you only ride a shortboard. <laughs> if you're an off-road racer, learning and knowing how to drive in the rocks and drive in all this different type of terrain, to me, that makes you a well-rounded driver. It's something that I, I, I was, this was so foreign to me, um, I mean, even really six months ago. And I just have this level of respect for what goes on in this crowd and, and the, the, the equipment they're building um, and then just the, the sheer gonads that it takes to drive up and down some of the stuff that you see. Don't you have an overall Baja 1000 win? Uh, I got five Baja 1000 wins, yeah. The overall has got a little asterisk next to it. But <laughs> spent some time in Baja. See, see you later. Uh, this, this transition from um, that pure desert racing world into this form of racing has been a, a real um, breath of fresh air to see the, uh, the, the the drivers that are so involved in all aspects of the vehicle maintenance and build, um, the, the tenacity and and um, just the willingness to deal with the harsh conditions. I mean, you know, King of the Hammers is just, just taught, you got the terrain, yeah, but then you got the weather and all the other things, and it's I like that the the challenge that goes along with all of that. So I, I'm excited about it. Dave and I are are really enjoying. Um, peeling the onion layers back here and and um, looking at the opportunity and um, there's there's so much more planned for the future this this next year's schedule is going to be off the charts for um, well for ultra four for sure but but it it uh, opens up some new avenues I think for just off bringing off roading to the world really yeah that's awesome the backstory there if you if for catching everybody up I mean I Jeff Jeff and Owen I found it in Hammer King Productions and then after a few years it was it just 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 me leading it and in January of this year actually late right after SEMA uh, Ryan came on board as the president of, of, of Ultra Four Racing and Hammer King Productions so he's uh he's the adult in the room trying trial to, by fire try to try to get us to do bigger better more professional things and just make a better better uh, presentation so. It's been a it's been a, a blast, and it, the amount of momentum we're picking up now is pretty awesome. Love it. Which is enlightening too, when you think about so much of the rest of the world is in slowdown mode, and we're foot to the floor right now. Not and that's not with a with a lack of respect to what's going on in the world, but we're we're fortunate, all of us that enjoy being outdoors. I mean, it's it's one area that is somewhat staying, un, not untouched, but at least uh, with slight modifications, we can continue to do what we love. Yeah, I, it's funny you say that because that's one thing that I feel like we're uh, blessed that most of the year you're talking crap, everybody wanting to be in the cities and, and going to fun concerts and the and the wives wanting to be at concerts and, and studios and movie theaters. And now with the the virus changing the way things are, it's, you know, we went out to Johnson Valley uh, on July 4th just for the day uh, to let my kids ride dirt bikes. It was 140. 105 degrees in Johnson Valley, and there was a hundred RVs there parked all over the desert. I mean, we went to the Hammers just because I know the area, and it's like there's a hundred RVs out there parking, and people are camping. It's like, wait a minute, this is supposed to be a win. That, that, that would have been a light weekend. I was out there every weekend, <laughs> almost like all up the whole apocalypse, and it was crowded. To me, I feel that. To me, if the momentum is going towards people stopping and like stop living in the city and expanding outside, it's like to me, it's like, dude, the forms of racing in in California, right? Without leaving the country, there's not many places that are actually putting on big, massive events, right? And like with the hammers, it's like, dude, 
if this is already happening now, what's going to be like, in, I mean, are we going to have hundreds of people already camping and enjoying the desert? And then the hammers rolls in. It's like the opportunity for growth is unreal. And now you're getting people that are going out there riding their UTVs, not even knowing that there's a race that now they can come partake in because they already own a Can-Am or they own a Polaris. And now they can go out and enjoy it. So to me, it's like, I agree. I think, yes, there, I, I feel, you know, terrible for the, the cities that are being affected. But man, like, on the opportunity side, you know, there's new, there's new light on opportunity that has never been seen. And like, yeah, I agree. I think some place like the hammers has the opportunity to bring more people in a safer way, uh, to, to have fun and enjoy the time. So it's, it's going to be crazy. Yep. So what's going on with you nowadays? Uh, right. Well, I'm, uh, I'm actually leaving in 25 minutes for the Rubicon trail. Uh, I'm going to go to the Rubicon. I'm uh, so right now I'm actually working. I'm, I'm Just working. Not, yes. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, non no, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, we're going for fun. Partake. No, uh, no group, no nothing. But, uh, so Casey Curry right now, obviously I'm not racing. I won the car, uh, and the momentum was great. And now everything kind of got haltered there. I had a terrible King of the Hammers on the racing side. Best rate, best week of the year so far, uh, with friends, family, and partners, and uh, racing-wise, I could not have spent any more money than I did. I mean, I tried to race. Tr I spent the money in Inter Trophy Truck to go one mile because I blew the transfer case out of it in qualifying. Then I blew the transfer case again in the race and then lost the motor 20 miles into the hammers. So, like, hey, I, dude, I don't even know. And I can, I've can. i won the Baja 1000 three years in a row. I can get to the finish of the Baja 1000. Why, why couldn't you have that kind of luck when I was racing in Mexico? Right? <laughs> I didn't a little bit of that bad luck. Uh, just, I, just a broken transfer case. That's all I was asking. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Just one. Yeah, just I, I'm telling you, I don't know. But uh, right now I'm taking this opportunity to uh, learn more about the Curry Enterprise business. I'm getting much more involved here. Uh, you know, and it, for me, I'm enjoying the time with my dad. My goal right now is by 2021 is that my goal is to kick my dad out and, uh, let him live. My grandpa, when I was born, my grandpa retired and my grandpa became, be, became the first Curry Enterprise brand ambassador of going out and going jeeping and driving his hot rod and drinking beer and Jägermeister with all of his friends, which happened to be industry people. And uh, I'm trying to get my dad, which, uh, you know, Dave, you went on the uh, Elcon uh, rally. I'm trying to get my dad to live a little. Dude, the, he's basically, he quit racing and enjoying everything when I turned pro. It's been 10 years of basically him following me around, chasing my dream. And it's like, now I'm like, dude, it's time to like, I don't need him racing because it's a t dangerous and a lot of work and he's getting older. But I'm like, dude, you should go and live. Like, he's got hot rods and muscle cars and Jeeps. I'm like... I'm trying 2021 is in life more on the fun side. I want him to go to the events that he loves. So I'm like, I just got, I'm getting down and dirty right now. I'm learning the business just like Ryan, what you're doing, peeling. I'm, there's a lot of plugs in the boat. I'm like, let's sink it, get a new shell and let's start over. So, uh, hey, in your dad's defense here. I spent a, a long conversation with him at Crandon last year and he very much enjoys chasing you around and watching <laughs> the race. So no, I don't, don't totally under the well, bus. dude, we're best buds. And the biggest thing is, is I, I feel that the opportunity, it, the time has come where dude, I'm, I'm 36 years old. Uh, I still enjoy racing and that side of the business, but dude, at the same time, he's got to, I want him to go out and enjoy more time. Dave gets to go out. He knows he gets to go race the ball 1000, do the Nora's and like, you know, like I let my dad race the, uh, my pre runner two years ago at the Nora and like, Dude, I brought my full team down there. He just showed up, basically helmet, driving suit, and drove a you know full blown trophy truck pre runner for a week. And like, I just feel that everybody deserves their time, and it's time for me to like, I got to do more dirty work. So I'm uh, I'm I'm learning. I'm learning your keep, Casey. Yeah, I'm I'm trying, dude. I'm trying to grow up. So. Can I get you to talk to Bailey for a little while, please? <laughs> I'm, I haven't fine-tuned the process yet. Let's just say I'm still getting my ass chewed probably three or four times a day, uh, every single day. But we're uh, – now it's, it's been great fun. We're, I enjoy it. I, you know, I love working with the family. So, But, I, yeah, I'm definitely – there's no high fives uh, around us. So I'm still getting my uh, – I'm still getting chewed out more than I'm doing right. We're, we're doing great business-wise. Uh, we're, we're doing good. The family's uh, – the business is great. 
Uh, but everything, you know, for me, I come in, all right, I want to make 25 changes. Let's do one at a time. Nope, 25 tomorrow. Okay, 18 didn't work, but, you know, seven did. It's like, that's about like me. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, so, and then tomorrow I'll make up 25 new things that mostly contradict the 25 I did yesterday. Oh, 100%, 100%. So, yeah. See, let's back to a little bit of industry. I'm curious about your guys' take. I mean, we're, we're in this fortunate place that there we are um, either forced to stay in our own homes, theoretically, or get outside and be socially distant, which fortunately we can we can do that in the desert. Um, it, it seems as if our culture is expanding and we talk a little bit about that, but from the, the um, and it's such a cliche word these days, but the overlanding world, I see that converging on the, the, the I mean, even the, the racing side of things, but the, what are you guys seeing on the overlanding front and how our cultures are merging and becoming one? I would say like for us on the overlanding, how I look at an, uh, the overland crowd for myself, uh, just being in the rear end business, most overlanders start at the top of their vehicle and work their way down, right? They first, they get the tent, then they accessorize the inside and then they get bigger tires. Then they need bigger axles where the, the you. yeah, right. The way of the rock crawling world, you know, the very first thing you do, if you buy a Jeep, you put bigger axles, bigger suspension to put bigger tires on it. Then you do the upgrades after. So it's a, it, the business model is a little bit different, but the way what we're seeing right now with everything going on and the way that I look at it is like, there's opportunity for, you know, the weird times that are leaving people at home working all day, you know, now, instead of going to the office, being stuck in an office all day, you got a guy that's still working, but working from home. Now we're getting guys that are going, Hey, I got time to work on my cars and my Jeeps or my trucks you know, on my lunch break, instead of having to drive up, like now I just, I'll take my 45 minute lunch and I'll just go work in the garage. I'll get everything I need. And while working, I'll order some more parts and I'll get some accessories that way on the weekend, I'll be more ready to do, you know, more projects. Cause the way I look at it, just like I said about the hammers, like the hammers is almost the perfect time for a complete new group of people coming out and seeing it just because it's like, Locked at home, working from home, still couldn't travel because I was working. But in that time, like you said, I got a new rooftop tent. I put my Jeep on 40s. I got, I got new axles. And now I'm ready to go out and see it. And, like, to me, that's where these events that are, like, not, hey, you need to camp here. You can't park here. You got to wear a mask. Like, to me, about the hammers is, like, hey, you guys can go park wherever you want. I don't – you guys aren't dictating where and what we're doing at events. The best part about for me about the hammers, you guys – you can go do whatever you want, right? We go to Crandon or certain races. Everyone's got to park where they do, and then you, that's where the precautions come. For me, about the hammers, and even the hammers in general, you can go anywhere you want. You can park down on the lake bed. You can park on the other side. There's people enjoying it, and that's what I'm seeing right now is, like, I feel a lot of people are building that when the weather cools down, you're, we're going to get more people going out and living an adventurous lifestyle than ever. So, so, so times ahead for business. Yeah, it's going to be, yeah, I mean, I think it's a great opportunity. I think it's important that we keep that mantra, just the positive, you know, there's so much negative in the world right now that we, those of us that are in this space kind of keep the, the, the momentum going for what we all love and believe in. Yeah, and I uh, did, I think that's the biggest thing is I think no matter what there is, those, if you watch the news and getting so involved in that, it's so, it's so hard and get, it's so easy to get scared in the wrong direction. And that, just like you said, for myself, like, Man, I'm taking the opportunities to uh, look at the positive and look at the future and, and look at growth. Because how I look at it, I think this is where it's making everybody second guess what they're doing, right? If you guys are getting more opportunity to look at and evaluate Ultra 4 and how to make it better, it's only going to make it better for all us racers, us enthusiasts, and fans. And it's the same as every company that comes out to the Hammers. It's every company that goes out to every desert race or off-road event, right? Everybody's getting that little bit of fresh of breath there to reevaluate how they're running their business, how they're doing things and how they're reaching their enthusiasts. Where to me, I mean, if we can get through these tough times and truly not go into a recession of any sort, I feel that we're truly better people in all aspects. Cause I feel that, you know, th these times are tough, man. And I feel that, you know, having strong willed people, I think that when it's all done and said, 
I think there's going to be a lot more people coming out and living the lifestyle that we think were dirty, grimy people. I think there's going to be more people that want to see that and believe it now. So yeah, drink and, water to that. Yeah. And I, I, I backwards though. And, and just, did I hear you right? You're in the rear end business. I, I'm in the rear end business. Come on. I love my nine inch. I, or if you, I can do that. I love my 10 inch stickers. What do you, we're, we're racing to four. There's a lot of 10 inches out there. Uh, Kyle, Kyle, just wait. we got a bunch of questions. Kyle, what do we got? All right. So see you on the trail wants to know Dave and Ryan, who do you think is going to win this weekend in the 4,400 class? Eric West. Derek, Derek West. It's woods. It's mud. It's tight. There's trees. It's Derek West. It's Derek West kind of race. And but the field is so deep here. Uh, Miller, both Blylers, uh, Bailey. You just saw Bailey Coles here. The, all three Campbells are coming. Paul Horsel, Lauren Healy, Levi oh. Shirley, <laughs> Kevin Feverfield. Uh, John Mule's got his brand new uh, dragon car here. There is. There's a lot of big, I mean, there's a lot of guys that can win here, but Derek West can win the race. So Saturday, the race is Saturday? Race is qualified Friday, race Saturday. So how do, okay, I'm, cause I'm getting out of the Rubicon. I'll have cell phone service by like noon on Saturday. How does the, how does the, just so, I mean, I want to know just knowing that it's live. How, how does it go? Do we got a couple qualifiers and then the main? How, just so. Qualifying on, qualifying's on Friday afternoon. Uh, I would say about four o'clock central time. So, uh, uh, two o'clock at Pacific time at home. Yep. Uh, and then, uh, and then Saturday, Saturday morning, we'll start racing. We're going to, it looks like we'll probably have a, a kid's race in the little Polaris aces. And then we're going to have a uh, UTV race. We're going to have a, a EMC limited class race. And then the, <laughs> and then the four corner race. Okay. So it's, a, oh, so it's action packed racing all day, all day long. Yeah. I, I would, yeah, we're going to lay the schedule out today, but I would say we'll probably race from 8 a.m. till 6 p.m. I like it. All, all hey, something worthy to note, too. We came up with a uh, first round on us is, is uh, a program we're doing to get new blood into the sport, and it's free entry fee for your first uh, for your first event. And I think we've got we're getting 10. Yeah, there's like 10 new people that have never raced old sport coming out. I like so it. So if you're at home and you're wondering, man, I just keep thinking I want to go racing, come, come racing. First round's on us. That's killer. Yeah, of mentioning is uh if you're watching the live feed at certain times throughout the live feed we're going to give a promo code out for uh um discounts on ultra four swag so you got to tune in to get that promo code but then you can uh get some good sweatshirts hats and t-shirts on the uh free race thing just so everyone knows out there if you own a utv it's not like best and desert score you they're a little bit more lenient on the rules as far as like the fuel tank so if you want to race you have a stock tank. you just need to have a, a true uh True cage. Yep. So the new Polaris cage meets the rules uh, that the, I believe, was it the Textron car? The Textron car met met the rules out of the box. Um, but a, you do a sport cage on a Can-Am and you're good to go. So, yeah, you, everybody can race. Don't think you got to build a full-blown race car. So if you, if for that opportunity, everybody should go race. Kyle, what do you got for the next one? All right. So the other one would be is, do you think a new Bronco will be racing KOH next year, Dave? <laughs> Similar to I, the Gladiator. I don't, I don't think A1 will be racing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I think you might see Broncos, but I don't know. I, I, I you know, for, from the limited time and, and the, the, the wonderful time that I've gotten to know the people over at Ford, they like to win and they like to show that they're competitive and they like to show that they're building their best product. So they've identified King of the Hammers as the place to prove that product. I would be pretty shocked if they don't come out there to show that they've built the best product. That's rad. I will say, uh, whoever does it, one of them needs to do it on 35s with a bolt-in roll cage. And uh, yep. <laughs> and I I did that in a two-door Jeep one time, and that was a freaking gnarly day. God, <laughs> that was a freaking gnarly day. You had, you had three, three co-drivers, though, didn't you? I, yeah, <laughs> I did. I did. I did. That was, uh, th honestly, probably the coolest thing I've ever done. Uh uh top of um what's the waterfall uh wrecking ball when that year we went down wrecking ball and it had you know the shortcut at the waterfall you kind of go up and over i had two people leaning off the back and then one spotting in the front i was like how this could not get any better <laughs> uh, what's the next one kyle I roll up rope there. <laughs> <laughs> what do so you got another one would be uh 
Over the years, what is your favorite story from King of Hammers, Dave? Or Ryan, too. Right. What, they want to know our favorite story from King of the Hammers. So you go first. You have one year of King of the Hammers. <laughs> and then I'll give mine. Wow. Well, you know what? I got to say, for me, um, living that experience for five weeks and five weeks and then culminating that night, the last night with Sublime, um, that was a pretty special night. Just lots of hard work, um, lots of new challenges for me. But then to sit there and, and watch a band that I've loved for a long time playing in the desert was, was pretty special. So I, I probably have a hundred different things I could say, but truly my favorite thing about the Hammers it doesn't even have anything to do with racing at all. It's when we've been out there as our group, there's probably 20 or 30 of us that are out making Hammer Town and getting it ready for you guys. And about, well, now it's getting earlier and earlier, but about a week early, the first racers start rolling in. You know, tribe shows up and they bring in their chicken wings and then you guys come out and the Campbells come out, usually come out a little bit early. And it's just basically getting to see everybody that you haven't seen for four or five months. And they're coming on the lake bed. Everybody's excited. It's a brand new year. There's new cars. There's all no, there's nothing but excitement. And that energy level is really incredible. And to me, that's recurring. That's happened every year. And that's the thing I look forward to every year. So can't wait to see you guys again next year as well. I, uh, I'll tell you my story that I've, I haven't really told much, but it's actually one, a very unique story. I uh, was leading overall the hammers on my 30. I got second twice in a row. I'm leading, and uh, me and Nick Campbell got into it in uh, Sledgehammer back when there was th thousands of people in it. And uh, ma whatever, I made, I made the mistake. All I needed to do was wait until he got up. Or wait, no, it was the opposite. I, I was up. I got in a hurry. Instead of letting him by and having him help me up, I was typical young. I'm, I still, whatever. I got in a hurry, flipped my car over. Yep. And then he ended up trying, getting in a hurry because he started way in front of me, but I was ahead of him. And I, we were, and then uh, whoever was in first overall, broken axle, like 100 yards ahead of us both. All I had to do was get up. That was the last rock trail. Whatever. It is what it is. But anyways... The, my story is, is I flipped over, made a crazy incident. Everyone thought I was a whiny baby. Sure, I was golden spoon child, blah, blah, blah. Every, heard it all, don't really give a shit. Uh, that, all this happens. The craziest thing that actually no one knows about is that all this buzz around me, you know, crying like a baby on the trail, blah, 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 happens on forum boards. Back, this is when forum boards were around. 2009, I think this happened. Before, uh, I don't know. 2010. 2010. So yeah. all, all this buzz happens, right? So all those, dude, I got forums going crazy. People are talking shit on me, all this stuff. So come to find out Hot Wheels wants to do a video series. A, they, they spent two and a half million dollars on a video production series. They went online and wanted to choose one of the best racers in all forms of racing. When they got to rock crawling, my name had been buzzed so many times on forums, right? This was back when before Facebook and, and how many followers there, the algorithm chose my name, right? Cause you know how you can choose to search on a forum and, and how many times my name had been talked about so many times in the uh, month of February, March, and April of whatever, 2010, that in June or July, if you go look at the series, it launched, I think in February of the following year, it was three months after the hammers that I got chosen to be the world's best driver. It's on YouTube right now. Of, and I was chosen to be the rock crawler in that video. And the, they chose me because of the algorithm on Google that just goes through all press is good press. Hey, the Robbie Gordon theory of life. I dude, Yes. At that time I was broken hearted, young, dumb. I made, yeah, sure. Some decisions in my life. I regret and, you know, but obviously how you look at it in life when you get kicked the hardest is when you find the best results. And sure enough, like, dude, I, yes, I feel that there's things I could have done that day much better because I should have gone on to win the King of the Hammers. Uh, there's things that I, you know, decisions could have been made better uh, the way we do things. It is what it is. And like, I only learn from my biggest mistakes, but I feel that what people don't realize is that opportunity came from Hot Wheels because they don't know anything about our industry at all, right? They're corporate America. Go find out who this driver is. Well, if you do the search that year, the buzz of the race 
was my incident. Well, that the only thing they they don't look and read them. All they say is put the data in front of me. Who's this dry, Who's got the biggest buzz around their name? Well, sure enough, yep. hey, it's Casey Curry, dude. <laughs> so sure enough, I ended up getting that deal, and because of that, like I ended up have Hot Wheels as a uh, one of my biggest partners for like five years after that, and uh, super fantastic partnership. And it literally came from the buzz of an incident and people talking shit. And uh, it's a crazy story to say it out loud like that, but if you go look at the year that incident happened and then uh, you, uh, World's Best Driver Hot Wheels, it all happens, everything happens for a reason. So yeah, dude, I was ready to quit and I was over it. I felt like the decision sucked. And uh, sure enough, a couple months later, the marketing kicked in and just like you said, no, ba- no press is uh, bad press. I got, I got another drive-by here for you. What do we got? Oh, jeez, dude. JT, big dog. It's been so long. How are you? I'm good, man. How are you? I'm doing good, man. We just found some new stuff for the course here. The drivers are going to be happy and or sad. <laughs> but uh, I think it's going to be fun. Dude, I'm uh, stoked. That's right. By the way, uh, I see on your Facebook. I don't, Dude, you're already used to the heat because you live in Florida some time of the year. But you're a mud bogger, dude. Yeah, I went down to uh, Rednecks Paychecks with my big mud jeep. It was a blast. <laughs> That's uh, so awesome, dude. Oh, my. Redneck. <laughs> <laughs> That's so awesome. So, hey, Ellie, good to see you, man. I'm going to go get back to work. You got it, man. Good seeing you. So, yeah, but anyways, that's my story that people, you know, when people th- say things happen for a reason, uh, like shitty thing happened, uh, you know, part of uh, obviously my decisions in racing led to things that happen. And, uh, but, you know, obviously things happen for, uh, positive on, on, on everything so yeah bad press did not do me uh anything on that one it actually you know all the shit talking came into the a major positive uh outcome so anyways long story short but i that was my king of the hammers marketing where you think that things are going wrong and turns out that marketing plays a factor in everything so kyle what you got kyle uh for dan ryan who would you like to see race KOH for the first time? Jimmy Johnson. Yeah. Sebastian Loeb. Oh. Ooh. Dang, you just had to go like right up there. <laughs> yeah. What? What? We've already we've had Robbie Gordon, we've had Cameron Steele, we've had Rob Mack, we've had Casey Curry. We've had a lot the, some of the best crossover drivers in the world, some of the best off-road drivers in the world come and come and race with us. You know, you, arguably you can say Sebastian Loeb was the best ever on dirt. So, so uh, 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 who's the uh, uh, Stefan Stefan Petter Hansel? Yeah. You know, bring, um, I'd love to see. Uh, um, uh, who's the guy uh, from Qatar? Nasser. Nasser Nasser Altia. Yep. Uh, I like to see. Uh, I like to see. Uh, I like to see AJ Jones, Jesse ah, Jones's yeah. kid. Rick. Yeah, I think he'd be so, good. Yep. 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 We need. You know, a- I got. I'll tell you a quick story, Casey. You asked me as, as KOA stories, not necessarily KOH, but I'd been uh, working with Jackson Motorsports Group and was at KOH for one of the teams that we, we were working with, and um, evening time rolls around and I hadn't been on, I hadn't even been out to see back doors. So I, I did, this was my first trip to KOH, this is 2015, I think. And uh, I hop in uh, this rock buggy, Bill Schuler's rock buggy, and we're gonna go on a ride up Turkey Claw. And we pull into the canyon to start going up the hill. And I'm thinking to myself, sitting in the passenger seat, uh, he must've made a wrong turn because we can't get up that <laughs> shit right there. So my point in bringing that up is you got, Guys like myself that have spent a lot of time driving in fast cars in the dirt, but have no comprehension of where an ultra far four car can actually go. And it's really opened my eyes up and looking down in Baja thinking it's almost again, like surfing. There's these waves around the world that people haven't found. There's rock trails all around the world that we haven't found yet. Yeah, I agree. I'm actually, uh, it's funny you say that I'm actually in the process. Uh, I just picked it up uh, from Jimmy's four before I just built a brand new uh, straight axle car that I'm only using for basically giving rides. Like I feel there's that many people I had, there's that many sponsors that I feel would be enthusiasts. I just need to give them a ride. I don't need, they don't even need to, they don't need to go hundred miles an hour. 
I don't yep. need to fly him to Mexico. I'm like, if I can just, I can take him to Chocolate Thunder and Wrecking Ball, and I will change your life forever. So um, that's my goal at the Hammers is to I'm building a rig that is going to be all, it'll be super nice. And the, my only concept is to give rides, L just rides. Amen. So, yeah, I, uh, I agree with you. Any more, Kyle? Uh, so they want to know if there's any hints you can give about any uh, music guests coming next year, maybe <laughs> like rock, hip hop, country. Uh, oh, musical guests. Yeah. So we've, we've evolved from, we're not yeah. asking for, yeah. we're not asking for a, tell me the race course. So now we just went, <laughs> I can tell you that I, I we're having the dueling pianos back again because that oh. was awesome. And then I don't know after that, you know, uh, let's, let's hear it let's, around. Let's, what do you guys want to see? Yeah. What do you want to hear? I'm, I'm, a, down, I'm not, I'm not a country guy, but oh. I'm down for some music. I like country music. I'm a uh, Chapman and I go back. He doesn't like country music. So Matt Chapman is my four wheel motorsports manager. I always try to push him. I like country music. Cause then it brings in like mini skirts and cow and cowgirl boots. That's like my, it's like my jam, dude. I, I live in Norco, California, man. Horsetown, USA. I want, I need some country Horsetown, in my life. California is not Horsetown, USA. That's what the sign says. <laughs> I'm sure it does because it's yeah. California. We claim anything. But, <laughs> sorry, I hate to break it to you. Uh, I uh, the uh, I actually had the uh, dueling pianos in my tent the night before the big night as a private uh, party, dude. They, they rock, were they rocked it. So. Yeah, but sublime. I mean, nothing sublime. I have to. Agree with Ryan. Watching Sublime it was like our own personal private party with, you know, ten thousand of your closest friends. It yeah. was super cool. I uh, I heard the same thing. I was, I left. I was very bummed on my uh, results yeah. that I was I pouted. Poor life decision on that one. Yeah, me. that's what I heard after. That's what I heard. <laughs> <laughs> Any more, Kyle? Uh, yeah. So, they want to know what your favorite race course for Ultra Four has been besides King of Hammers. Favorite race course? Yeah. I love watching nationals. When we go to nationals, I'm a fan. I don't, that's the one race I do nothing at. JT handles everything, soup to nuts on the race course. I literally sit in the stands and I'm just a fan. And that's the only time I get to do that. Uh, so I love nationals. I think Oklahoma's a cool course. Um, uh, uh, and, and Bailey just brought it up right now, Portugal. Portugal oh. is a great race. And you know that you raced it yourself, Casey. But uh, um, so yeah, we've had we've been fortunate to have some great courses around the world. Um, China was pretty cool, <laughs> but uh, yeah. What yeah. Do you, what did you like? You, you've raced a few of our races. Well, I would say. Well, here's where I'm at. As a fan, I don't know if like, dude. I I give the Ultra Four guys. This is where I give the Ultra Four guys credit. Nationals, I don't know what year, I don't know if it was last year or two years ago, but the rocks in like one area of the rocks, they could skip over the rocks. Yep. And like, dude, I, I mean, as a knowing what the vehicles are capable of doing and seeing one or two drivers doing that, it's like it's mind blowing how fast the cars truly are. When you watch some cars are idling through it, just trying to get through without damaging anything, how brutal it is to see, like, I think it was Shannon Campbell and one other guy just. I mean, third gear on the chip, right through them. I mean, didn't even upset the car at all. And then you watch, I think the Gomez brothers hit it a foot off and rips a corner off, flat tires. I mean, radiator spewing water. It's like, dude, this is gnarly. Uh, it's it's good. It's good when it's good. <laughs> it's really bad when it's not. Uh, I, I like that. I, I think that's a great race. The hard part for me, obviously, I race the ball 1,000 every year. Now it changes. So now that you're changing the schedule up, it, it brings more opportunity for that. So we'll, we'll see what happens. What do you got, Kyle? Uh, one more. I think it's really a funny one, though. Uh, Casey Gilbert wants to know if you're buying the beer this Friday, Dave. <laughs> Absolutely. Come on down, Casey. I want to know if Casey's racing 4,400 or 4,800. <laughs> we'll wait for a response. Uh -huh. yeah, that's I got a dollar bet on Bailey if he's racing 4,400. Oh, that's awesome. That is awesome. Well, ba ba so ba Bailey and Casey have been head to head. Got the, watching those two, watching those two race in Legends class for the past few years has been some of the best racing, some of the best racing we've ever had. It's so, awesome. So uh, they, uh, they, uh, I would love to see him. I, my understanding is Casey's going to step up to 4,400 as well. Bailey's nice. already made them. And uh, watching them continue that, that uh, um, battle is going to be fun to watch. That's killer. 
you'll be facing with it for a long time. For the, dude, the class is getting the class is already stacked, and there's a lot of opportunity. And you could see the guys transitioning into 4400 class. I mean, it, it's yep. for sure getting real out there. I mean, but even then, like the all the other classes, you know, like dude, there are some serious cars being built for all the for yeah. all categories. Absolutely, no, our car counts are up and. Uh, you know, we just gonna keep doing our best to keep moving it forward. Heck yeah. Well, guys, I actually, time is uh, up. It's already 1240. I know you guys got to get to work. I appreciate yep. it. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me. Um, watch, watch us on ultra4racing.com. Good luck to you. Have fun on the Rubicon, Casey. You got it. You guys enjoy it. We'll be, uh, we'll be watching Saturday. What do you got, Kyle? Casey Gilbert is running both classes. There you go. Fantastic. <laughs> Awesome. Two beers, two beers for Casey then. That's awesome. All right, guys. All right. Hey, safe. Be safe out there. Good luck. And uh, thank you guys very much Good for coming on. Driving Line Nitto, thank you guys very much. We'll see you guys next week. Adios. Cheers. Thank you, guys.